Hey, and welcome back. If you're new to my channel, I'm Cass from Clutterbug and I help people identify their unique organizing style so they can actually set up systems that stay tidy for good. And I'm excited about today's video because I'm gonna show you the best organizing ideas for all the different organizing styles. I'm going back years to different clients to show you their organizing transformations. Before I show you these incredible organizing transformations and share a ton of ideas, I want to talk about how this Clutterbug philosophy of organization isn't one size fits all really came to be. You guys know that I was a super slob and I struggled with clutter and mess and just managing laundry and dishes and everything else that comes with being an adult. And I never really made a change to a tidy person until I understood why I was failing. I'm just not a detailed person. I need a less organized, laid back approach to organization. And when I started organizing like that, things stayed tidy. So I thought there was two ways to organize, a detailed traditional way or like a laid back way. And I started helping friends and family and then clients. People started calling and it was crazy pants. But I was so insecure about the fact that I'm helping people and charging money to organize their home that this was my marketing strategy. If I organize your home and it doesn't stay organized for the next 30 days, I'll come back and organize it for free, guaranteed. This is how I marketed myself. And my clients, some of them called back, you know, and they were like, it's messy, it's two weeks later. And I would go back and I would organize it for free. I'm a people pleaser, but also I'm crazy. This was not a good marketing strategy because Joe was like, we're gonna go bankrupt. And I was spending so much time reorganizing people's spaces that I had, it was like sink or swim. I had to understand why they're not able to keep it tidy. Why is it not staying organized? And I do not believe that people are lazy. I don't believe that that's true. They organize differently. And so I really worked hard to identify four different organizing styles. And here's how I know that this works. When I identified their style and I organized their home based on their style, they didn't call me back. I stopped having to go back and organize it for free. And that is where the four organizing styles came from. That's how I know it works. And I'm gonna break them down for you and show the best ideas for each of the styles right now, starting with the B. A B is a really naturally detailed person. They tend to be perfectionists a little bit, but they're also visual. They love to see their stuff. They tend to pile till later and they leave out all their favorite things. They're always on the go. And my client Marge is a traditional B. I don't think she's ever decluttered anything in her whole life. She wants to reuse everything. Everything is special. She wants to see everything. And this has added up to a ton of clutter in her craft room. I'm Mark. I'm very nervous and I'm also very excited. This has been my space for quite a few years. I have a lot of stuff, many, many cupboards and many, many totes. Everything I am going to use one day. <laughs> So I'm not sure how we're going to purge, but I need to get organized. I need that in my space to make me a happy sewer. The one thing about the bee organizing type is that they have the hardest time letting go of any other organizing type. I cannot go into a bee's home and fill 25 trash bags immediately. It has to be a slow, gentle approach, a little bit at a time. Even if they're letting go of one thing, that's what we need to keep the momentum going for the rest of their life. It's about showing bees that decluttering isn't scary, that it's a positive experience. And once you can get a bee to start letting go, I know that they're gonna continue long after I'm gone old, worn looking placemats. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to see these as money because they're not. 
because they're not being used. I don't want you also to look at everything for what it could be turned into because you're doing like, look at those cool things, those bags. What would you use these for? I don't know. Donate. <sighs> that makes me so happy. I, I love it so much. The secret to organizing for a B is to keep it really visual. So have lots of bulletin boards, open shelving, clear jars. Anytime that you can get something on the wall, that's going to be how they keep it organized. They want to see their stuff. So take it off the surface, get it on the wall, and like magic, the space is going to stay organized. So we wanted, I know you love flowers and you love spring, so we wanted to bring some spring. Oh, don't cry, come here! Oh! How am I gonna work in here? I'm so glad you like it. I'm so glad. So look, at all the best. Don't cry, you're right. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> come see. So, all of your project boxes. Beautiful, here. And then we have more project boxes down here. So. Everything's organized by priority because I know if you're a little bee brain, you want to do all these things. We also made you a little board with all of your, come over here so I can see all of your orders. So these are where all your orders go, right? Okay. I just made them up because I don't know what your orders are, <laughs> but we have the pads of paper. So you're like, you know, I have to do this for Susan or whatever. And then some of the things you've already created can be hung. Nice. I love it. And we sorted all your thread and buttons and all your small little bibbity bobs. Oh. So it's all super organized for you. We love it. This does make me very happy. I'm so glad you like it. And everything has a home and everything's labeled. And I feel like it feels like you. Fresh and springy and full of love and life. Another space that I did for a bee is my father-in-law's garage. He is very much a typical bee, super perfectionist, wants to see his stuff, but bees also tend to kind of have a lot of procrastination clutter or procrastic clutter, I like to call it, because they're waiting till they can do it perfectly. So this garage was filled with stuff he was going to get to later, whether it was putting away the Christmas decorations or even just taking out the recycling. He was just kind of tossing things in there till he had time to do it right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is honestly just put things that don't belong away. I'm taking action on all of this procrastination. The most important thing that I can do when organizing a bee space is to create visual zones for things. So I really wanted to create a section for tools with a workbench and going ahead above that and adding a pegboard. So it's super obvious that all of the tools go in this zone. And because it's up on the wall and it's really visual, my father-in-law is going to put things away. He's going to see what he has, but he's going to be motivated to put it back because it is done in such a visual detailed way. And I did this throughout the entire garage, zoning different spaces and making sure that it was really visual.
place. So I'm using an alpha system to zone this spot for gardening. Underneath is where we're going to store the lawnmower and I've installed pegboard so we can hang all of the smaller gardening tools and have little pots, everything they need for planting their garden in the summer. And on either side, that's where all the larger gardening tools will go. Golf clubs are used almost every single day, so they definitely need the prime real estate in this garage, which means we've zoned this section right by the door for all of the golf clubs and hung this alpha pegboard for all of the golf accessories. Now it's time to show my in-laws. Oh, that is so cool. You've got a grown-up garage. Now I'm going to show you Sarah, another bee client. My name's Sarah. I live in Chatham, Ontario with my husband, Jason, and my three boys, Lucas, Cooper, and Cruz. Today, we're going to work on my pantry. So our pantry has a lot of jobs to do for us. It has to house extra food. It has to house all kinds of things for the boys from their backpacks, their lunch pails, their homework, everything that they come home with. Um, then right down to everything, coloring books, craft activities. There's just a lot of stuff that has to go in there. I am guilty when company comes over. I do have a bad habit of just taking things off the counters, making it look nice and neat and tidy and putting it in the pantry and shutting the door. <laughs> I'm actually really excited about this space because it isn't a lack of organization. You are so organized. <laughs> it is not too much stuff. Okay. It's not that you have an abundance of stuff. This is just not taking advantage of the valuable real estate. So anything, you're kind of short. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> it's true. You're slightly <laughs> short. So anything up here you can't reach. That's right. And this is the spot where you're using all the time. Right. So here's my plan for this space. Right here, we're gonna have a drop zone for their paperwork that they're coming in, the kids' schoolwork. It's gonna be like mom's purse drop zone to keep it off the kitchen counter. This, I think, is the perfect area for a lunch making station. Right now, this is filled with like coloring books and construction paper that isn't being used every day, but this is the most valuable real estate in here and the kids can reach it. So we're gonna relocate all of the kids' snacks down low and put their lunch pails right above. So this is our little lunch making station. And everything that's used less often, we're gonna create like a Costco corner up high with stacked clear labeled containers. Mom's a little on the short side, so we're gonna put things that she's not accessing every day way up high and just relocate the things that like maybe don't even need to be in here overall this is going to be a really fast easy organizing job and it's going to be long lasting this is going to be so easy for them to maintain and i'm really excited to get started so we're moving everything out So that was fast. It was fast. I, you really don't have, I mean, it looks like a lot, looks but like honestly, lot. It, it's not that bad at all. But there, I'm noticing that there's a lot of things that probably don't belong in that hub for your home. I agree. So we want the things that you're using at least weekly to okay. go in there. And if you're not using it one time a week, mm -hmm. It's going to be real. You have a ton of storage. You don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I don't feel like I do. You have so much storage. You have a great toy room in the basement, and I get it. You have three kids, so we're not going to put markers. We don't want them coloring. Okay. But we are going to relocate things like stickers and coloring books that they're not using at least once a week. Okay. Downstairs, they can go get them and bring them up when sure. they want to color. So that's what I want you to do is to go through, and then if it is things you know you want to stay, we're going to have one empty one here. Okay. That you can put those into. Perfect. 
I'm having Sarah quickly go through and sort her things into keep, toss, donate, but I already see her little bee perfectionist brain coming out. She's like cleaning things. Bees, man. Put it, put it down. Just giving them a little <laughs> Listen, just giving them a little clean. It's fine, okay. it's fine. We'll it's dry like, it up. Everything in your home is very, very clean. Well, there was a little dirty. I'm just dead panning right now. <laughs> the most bee thing I've Time. ever seen. Look at this. <laughs> the best intentions always. And so it's empty. <laughs> so here's the honest truth. Mm -hmm. um, you're busy, you work full time, mm -hmm. you have three children. Mm -hmm. You're never going to do this. <laughs> Probably not. No, because there's only so much time in your day. This so sometimes we can over organize our lives. Yeah. And this is a really good example of it. It's better to just have a, an envelope that you stick them in, that you move to your car and move back in the house. True. And it's like, let's just be good enough it. and be done with it. Okay, so now we're organizing their markers and craft supplies. They're gonna stay up here when they do their homework. But the thing that they have, like, no kid's gonna use this. You know what I mean? This is so micro. What kid's gonna take the time to put things away? None. And the other solution is just a bucket filled with, a bucket filled with junk. So instead, we're gonna opt for a cleaning caddy and a bunch of cups. These solo cups, I'm just using these little dollar store cups. And that's gonna be our divider so we can have pencils and pencil crayons and all of the things sorted, but fast and easy to find and put away in their little homework caddy. Okay, so now that it's empty and it's macro sorted, it's time to put everything back. Truth be told, I'm not exactly sure where everything's gonna go yet. This is gonna be like a work in progress, but ideally the stuff that's used less often, hi. The stuff that's used all the time, low. You're getting the point. So let's start moving everything in. Wow, that looks way different. Look, yeah. guys. Wow. <laughs> so we have spots for your bills. We kept this because I loved this. It I matches really, with everything and too. It really does. So we this is completely empty. We have your baseball things below. Everything else we found okay. homes for in here. Perfect. But we left you empty drop zones. I want you to have like yeah. empty drop oh. zones. So this is where your school papers will go that mom has to oh. sign. Okay. Bills that have to have been paid bills that are need to be paid okay are in here we have a spot for your purse Ooh, and it matches with everything it too. does <laughs> i was so excited and then all of the boys memories are here which is so nice you ready so you get to make your own lunches so all okay. of your snacks wow. are nice and down low for you all organized me yeah, now i can just eat whatever i want <laughs> you can totally just maybe not eat whatever you want but then your lunch pails are above here, so you each have your own one. And then so you can, when you unpack your bag, you can put your lunch pail in here and your homework can go in here. Wow, this looks fantastic. Awesome, and then I love this so much. Look, so guys. guys. Do homework and do crafts. Ooh. You love that. And all of your extra art and craft supplies are up here.
The next organizing type is called a butterfly. And a butterfly, just like a bee, is really visual. They want to see their everyday important things, but unlike a bee, they are not detailed at all. They're super laid back, big picture thinkers. When they're done with something, they're not thinking about putting it away. They're kind of just dropping it wherever it may lay, which can look like a lot of mess. I want to share some really easy solutions for butterflies and I want to introduce Stephanie to show you because she is such a perfect example of a classic butterfly. My name is Stephanie. Um, I have two kids. My daughter is nine and my son is six and my husband of course lives here as well. This is my brand new kitchen that we just recently renovated. So it's kind of like my dream kitchen and I thought I would totally be able to be organized once I had a new kitchen, but I am not. <laughs> So I love Stephanie's kitchen. And the first thing I noticed might be something that you noticed at home too when I'm trying to diagnose you. My fridge. Your fridge. <laughs> this is the first thing I look at when I go into somebody's home is, you know, when I'm trying to diagnose if they're visual or hidden, right. is the front of their fridge. Yes. <laughs> because I'm seeing a lot of visual things. I'm seeing the cookie jars on the counter and I'm seeing the things you use every day are out and that doesn't bother you. You like that. Yeah, I don't mind them. But I also get a sense that you also don't want any clutter. Right. I think there's a perception about what organization looks like. Home edit. Right. Yes. Right? Everything Pretend. lined up and in pretty containers. But the truth is, I can't see you decanting your nuts. No. I just feel like that's not you and that's not me either. No. So we're going to set up a system so it's kid friendly. Yes. It's fast, easy organization, but it's still pretty because that, I think, is what... She, that's why you don't yes. feel like it's organized because it isn't pretty. pretty. <laughs> we can do that. We can do fast, easy macro organization and make it pretty, but it starts with decluttering. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay. Could somebody wake me up? I don't want to be here and let the world pass me by. Yeah. I just see her face where ever I look, she's standing in the crowd. Definitely the biggest issue when it comes to butterflies is identifying that valuable real estate because you have to see and have quick access to the things you use every single day or else it just becomes a jumbled mess on surfaces. So anything from waist to eye level is what I call valuable real estate. And we have to make sure that the only things that are stored there are things that you're using all the time. For Stephanie, she loves to cook. So she had every gadget. She could peel, she could dice, she could slice in a million different ways. And this stuff that she really didn't use very often was in her valuable real estate. So she didn't have a spot for food. In fact, I couldn't really see her food at all because it was shoved and hidden here, there, and everywhere. So the first thing we have to do before we really even take back some real estate and organize is definitely do a fast declutter. This is going to hurt you. <laughs> Here's what we're gonna do. If it doesn't have a lid and a bottom that we aren't gonna match them all, okay. it's going. End of story. Deal. I see a lot more lids than bottoms, so I'm excited. About these. That's a no. Every time you, I know you're going to try to think of a lie to keep it. Them. Can I say it? Say it. Say it. <laughs> Stephanie sages her house when ghosts follow her home. <laughs> coolest life. <laughs> it's crazy. My only goal when organizing a kitchen for a butterfly is to make things as visual as possible, even behind closed doors, like in drawers and cabinets, and to make sure that I'm really using that valuable real estate. So the most important space in the kitchen, when she opens the doors, I want to make sure she can see her most important stuff, which is food. I want to make sure that every drawer is organized so it's really visual, so she can easily see what she has, and more importantly, Put it away fast. You want to see this pantry? Wait, don't you see? Oh my gosh. I went with these clear bins that are 
perfect for butterflies, but they're a little bit bigger and we can have them stacked behind too. We have room to spare in this pantry now, which is crazy. Like it's not all full. We also added another shelf here just to really maximize the space. She likes to keep the cereal way up high for the kids. So this is just snacks extra food and drinks at the bottom, but now it fits. There's no more shoving. Everything is so organized and I'm just in love with these containers for butterflies. They are perfect. This is my favorite part. Are you ready? Dun, 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 dun. Look at all the food. Okay, this is, I know. We. I can't, I can't stop talking about it. The food before was hidden behind the spices, which is kind of bananas because you have to eat, right? And I know she makes a lot of things from scratch with fresh ingredients, but you still need rice and pasta and pancake mix and all of the canned goods were lost. And now all of her spices are super organized in this drawer. It's the little things that excite me. And this makes me definitely excited. I feel like this is just gonna make cooking so much easier for this family. This kitchen wasn't about a huge transformation. It wasn't really messy to begin with and it wasn't really that disorganized either, but it's the simple things like moving the cutlery drawer here under the plates and dishes. It just changes the entire flow of the kitchen. It makes it so much more organized. I love that this butterfly kitchen really demonstrates that you can have things on the counter. There's so many things on the counter, but it's still organized and it doesn't feel cluttered. I love too that we made a little coffee station with all of her favorite things. And instead of having things shoved, which doesn't work for anybody, whether you're a macro or a micro organizer, everything now is easy to get to. And better yet, it's easy to put away. They were leaving things on the counter because it was hard to put things away before. Decluttering and just reorganizing has made this kitchen so functional. This was the biggest problem area in this kitchen. This was their dumping ground. They were coming in the door. They didn't have a landing zone. So everything was ending up here, especially Colin, the husband. They don't have a garage. So he, all his tools, all the things he uses to fix up the house, everything was dumped here and dumped in these two drawers, which were both junk drawers. Now, come on, this is cool. Everything has a home. They still have a lot of junk in their junk drawer. But because they don't have a shed or a garage, it makes sense that they're gonna have more than the average home. But now it's organized. You can see at a glance everything that they have. And over here, this cabinet's gonna just change everything. This is what I'm calling Colin's cabinet. And that's because everything that he uses to fix up the house or things that he's coming home with, he drops here. So I cleared this out so he can now drop it here. It's all of his tools and the speaker when they're having a party in the backyard and his drill. So now we've created a designated zone just for him and a landing zone for the incoming mail and their keys and their sunglasses, which was normally right here on the counter. So we're keeping the counter clutter free and just making a subtle shift. This is what organization is all about. It's about creating homes for things where you naturally put it down. If we had to have him put his tools outside or someplace in the basement, he just wouldn't do it. If it's hard to put away, you're not going to. So make sure you're creating homes exactly where you naturally pile it. I also had the privilege of organizing other spaces in Stephanie's house, like her basement. Her basement kind of just a bit of a disaster. So the things that are bothering me is my husband's stuff is everywhere. And you, I can't really blame him because he doesn't really have a space. So his dresser's in there. Some things are hung up here. We have a sock bin. He has a lot of shoes. He's a landscaper, but he also likes nice clothes. So there's a bit of everything going on down here for him. Things just get thrown down here because I have no other space, no garage. So, so much clutter just gets put down here. I feel like my kids 
play area which gets cluttered with stuff too. So two big issues is laundry room and Colin stuff and kids room chaos. I was having Stephanie declutter her space using the three golden decluttering rules, which are if I haven't used it in the last year, if I don't love it, and if I wouldn't buy it again, it has to go and leave. But Stephanie, she didn't really want to let go of too much, and she was like making up lies why she needed to keep things. Do you know what you do? <laughs> you take a deep breath and you sigh. I'm gonna try to think of something. You try to think of a lie. I love it. I love it. <laughs> The goal in this laundry room was to create as much visual storage as possible and she was actually doing a great job above the washer and dryer using all visual storage, but we needed a space for clothes. It's going. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Listen, I am also not wearing your duct tape. Okay, yes, you this are. is happening. Just can it get? Hey, girl, there are oh my, how tiny! I was tiny. You, you shimmied into this. Sh well, no, I, think I have no boobs. <laughs> Look, it's even oh, got the shelf. Oh my, I feel good. I feel he's it's sucking in things. Isn't that hilarious? This is coming home with me. How do you feel about letting this go? Absolutely not. <laughs> Are you seriously keeping this? Why not? It's funny. Okay, fine. We'll keep it. I'm gonna wear it. Okay, so let's... Honestly, I have a feeling a lot of this is... You're just filling. She's got ADHD. She's just... She stopped talking and she started <laughs> filling. Like, <laughs> mid-sentence. I have a feeling a lot of this stuff is like... You were un doing pockets or something 100%. or just random things in a laundry basket and you're just like you know where it's gonna live in a pile forever that's literally what this is oh my everything i found everything so, so what if we make it a little bit bigger you need a random junk but what's yeah. in here this pretty more are you serious stop it i swear you that's like so many socks i know More socks! <laughs> so Stephanie's gone, and the big transformation in this space is going to be the open closet. Colin didn't have a place to actually store his clothes. He's a butterfly, he doesn't use a dresser, he lives out of baskets, and it was really hard to access anything hung, so we're making him an open closet. They already had this existing closet made system on this wall, we shifted it, and I found the matching unit, which I'm super excited about, so we can make him a giant wall open closet, which is perfect for his organizing style. I'm gonna assemble this, I'm gonna put all his clothes, I can't wait for them to see this amazing transformation information. Is that what you're looking for? This is awesome.
so your much. Your clothes that... were just piled everywhere. This so is all great. new. I'm so excited yeah, for you. So what I did is all your casual stuff on this side and all your dressy clothes on this oh, side. I like it. Right? Yeah. I sorted <sighs> them. It's so good. I folded them. You don't have to fold in the future, but you're you're the type of person who doesn't use a dresser. You were living out of baskets, so why not have a basket system? All of your landscaping branded t-shirts folded and organized. Thank you. Modern Escapes Landscaping. Number one for landscaping and sprinklers in Windsor, Ontario. You fit your family has a lot of socks. Yeah. This is your sock. It's sorted yeah. into bins. It's perfect. Everything's sorted into bins. Okay, so look, you even have a little accessory center. So you go, yeah. and, and all your shoes too, because you have you just like full. It's cool. It's cool. Look at it. It looks amazing. Yes, this is good. You did great. <laughs> totally worth trashing your house, right? Honestly, yeah, it was great. You held my house hostage and it worked out. Oh. Butterfly. Oh my God. I didn't do anything. I also organized Stephanie's playroom for her kids, which was right beside the laundry room. And honestly, this was such a fast and easy little makeover using what they already had, just trying to tweak it so it worked better for a butterfly. Hudson and Hunter don't have a lot of toys, but the ones that they do have are organized in this toy organizer. It's not my favorite toy organizing system, but I actually love it with picture labels. The reason I didn't love this system was because the toys were hidden and kids are really visual. But now that we added the adorable picture labels to the front, not only does it look so cute, but it's actually functional. They know where everything is inside and it's really easy to put things away. Anytime I'm organizing Nerf guns, I want to put them on the wall. And a pegboard is the perfect way to do that. It's cheap, it looks fantastic, but it's really functional too. Easy, simple organization, but I know they're going to be able to keep it tidy. And that's what really matters. I'm excited for this space. It feels bright. It feels fun. And I'm going to bring the family home right now and see what they think. The next organizing type is what I call a cricket. And a cricket is a hidden organizer. So they prefer their things behind closed doors, out of sight, but they are crazy detailed. A cricket is definitely what you think of when you think of a traditional organizer. Marie Kondo is a cricket on steroids. Crickets are pretty, they're pretty perfect. I wish I was one, I am not, but that's okay. But we're gonna get into all the amazing things that work for a cricket. The truth is, any organizing system actually works for a cricket. They are the most adaptable organizing style. As long as they have something set up, they can use it, but they prefer to have things behind closed doors, out of sight, and really super sorted into lots of categories because they wanna find things quickly. So in this garage, I just took shelving that they already had and used some solid bins with lids that stack to really sort and create amazing Cricut organization. One thing that was working in this garage is actually this shelving unit. You need storage for all the things you want to store out here, but we're going to make it even more organized by adding all of these Sterilite containers to really maximize the vertical space. So I got a lot of different sizes. I'm lining them up in the driveway so I can sort all of their things into the containers, put them back on the shelf and label them. recently organized my parents' kitchen and my parents are such 
crickets. They take time to sort their chocolate bars and all their medication into tiny little containers. So it was really fun organizing a kitchen for their style because it's all about the containers. It's all about putting things into little categories, making sure it's labeled and clear where everything goes, and doing fun things like decanting their food, decanting all their spices, putting things into alphabetical order. Crickets love perfection. That doesn't mean that their home always looks perfect because because they have such high expectations of themselves and of what organizations should look like, they tend to pile till later. They kind of tend to, it's an all or nothing mentality. But when a cricket takes time to set up a system, they will have no problem maintaining it. So to all my crickets out there, just schedule some time, decant your spices, add some labels, Organize under your sink. It doesn't matter what supplies you use or how you do it. Once you sit down and make a system, you have no problem maintaining it. The last organizing style is a ladybug. And ladybugs, just like a cricket, love things behind closed doors. They don't want to see their stuff, but they are not detailed, like at all. Like at all at all. They're like fast, easy, fast solutions, which means they tend to hide and shove. So the whole house might look really, really tidy, but if you open a closet or a drawer, it's a disaster. And because of this shoving and hiding and this real anxiety that comes with seeing their stuff, there's a cycle. There's a cycle of everything being crammed, not being able to find anything. So you have to pull everything out to find what you need and shove it back. It wastes a lot of time and it causes a lot of stress. So I, because I'm a ladybug, love organizing for ladybugs the most because it can change your life when you use the right system behind closed doors so you can still shove and hide but have it go into an organized system. And the first house I want to show you is Kelly. Kelly is such a traditional ladybug. I walked into her house, is spotless. I didn't see a thing out of place until I started snooping every drawer, every, every closet, every cabinet was stuffed so full. She could never find anything. She was rebuying things over and over and her anxiety was at an all time high. Why do you think you have so much food? I know we've just met and this is a personal question, but this is a lot of food. Yes. Um, I think because I w didn't know what I had, so I would buy duplicates of it, right? So I needed some peas, so, but I did have peas already in the back of the cupboard, but I would go buy more peas because I needed them at that moment, so. Right, and you couldn't see them. So I'm right. gonna guess a lot of this is expired. Yes. Because I think a lot of this is forgotten. So here mm. are the rules. We're just gonna start tossing anything that's expired. Okay. If you come across something that you bought that you don't like and your family doesn't like, mm. I want you to let go of that scarcity mindset. When I see this, I see what if. I better have just in case. Yes. But if you haven't eaten it and you don't like it, let's donate it to a food bank. Okay. So that your kitchen has breathing space. So when you go to cook, you can see everything you have. It's really obvious and it's not hidden behind food you'll never eat and don't like. Six trash bags of expired food. But 
I feel good. Do you feel like stressed about this or does this feel like a weight off your chest? This feels like a weight off my chest. Uh, yeah, I don't feel stressed at all about this. So these trash bags, we're putting them to the curb and we're moving on to dishes and appliances. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's do it. When I first came to Kelly's house, I came in and I'm like, why am I here? It's so tidy. But I know I found a ladybug because I asked you if I could snoop and I opened this door <laughs> and I can relate. Are you ready for it? <laughs> what is going on in here? <laughs> this is a huge closet. This is where you hide stuff. Yes. This is your Monica closet. <laughs> yes. I love it so much. You know, I looked at it and I was like, there's a bat. Is this like protection? Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't have to need the bat because if you open the door, this will fall on exactly, their heads and yeah. crush any intruder that comes yeah. into your home. Just having functional storage in here, we're going to turn this into a pantry of your dreams. We're going to empty this entire closet. Okay. I know there's things at the bottom that have been in here for four years. Mm -hmm. I want you to really be ruthless. Okay. Stuff shuffling is how you okay. got into this problem. Okay. Things have to leave. Yes. At the end of the day, Kelly took all of the expired food and her husband actually weighed it at the dump, 285 pounds just of expired food. That doesn't count the donations, it doesn't count all the food that went to the food bank. This was the most I had ever decluttered from a kitchen ever and yet, you would never know that the house was even messy at all. You wouldn't even, there was nothing out in this kitchen, which really shows the power of a ladybug's ability to hide and shove. Once you've decluttered for a ladybug, organizing for a ladybug is so fast and easy. This is by far the easiest style to organize for because it's all about being a basket case. It's about baskets and bins, no lids, and just having big categories so you can still toss things away, but all the snacks go into the snack bin, or all the, I don't know, baking supplies go into the baking supplies bin. One trip to the dollar store for some oversized baskets is all you need to organize an entire ladybug space. This is where Kelly has her current junk drawer, and this is actually such an important drawer. It's where she stands to pack up lunch. It's really close to the sink. It shouldn't be a junk drawer. It should definitely be where they keep dish towels and maybe sandwich bags and plastic wrap. So I'm going to take everything out. We're going to actually create a new junk drawer in her entranceway. So I have four baskets that will fit. So I'm creating four categories just by looking at what is in here. I see a lot of like COVID related type things. So we're going to have one for health. We're gonna have one for home. Papers are gonna find a new home. I think we're gonna have one for batteries and one for miscellaneous. Now that we know each of the categories, it takes seconds just to take out and organize. This is the spot in Kelly's kitchen where they were naturally piling all their snacks on the counter and it was driving her crazy. So we're creating a snack cabinet right above where they naturally pile and we have baskets, labeled baskets for all the different types of snacks. This is going to transform their kitchen, just one cabinet filled with baskets. The biggest transformation in this kitchen is definitely adding a pantry. This closet was a hot mess. What an amazing opportunity to create food storage. I just installed really inexpensive wire shelving. Now I'm gonna fill it up with all their food. Are you ready? It looks the same because your kitchen was already super clean. <laughs> right, but everything's behind. Everything's behind closed doors. Yeah. So I don't want you to see your pantry yet. I okay. just want you to snoop in the cabinets and check it out.
Are you ready to see your pantry? Yes. Get in there. Go check out your All beautiful right. new pantry. Ooh, oh my god, I love it. Kelly's pantry transformation wowed me. And I'm, I'm just like, yeah, the power of a basket for ladybugs. What more can I say? But I wanted to show you another transformation for a ladybug and showing you Kathy's laundry room. Kathy is a client that I worked with a couple years ago who had a beautiful, beautiful home, spotless, except when you open the door to her laundry room. Hi, my name's Kathy and I'm a stay-at-home mom. And I have four children. It's just chaotic here all the time. <laughs> the challenge with my laundry room is it becomes my dumping zone because I don't have time to put things away. So it gets shoved into a basket, into the laundry room and forgotten. The first step to organizing this space is to take everything out. <laughs> Kathy had a lot of excess. It's just years of hiding and shoving in this room. She forgot what she had. She was rebuying things and her kids had outgrown a lot of stuff. So we spent a solid two hours just decluttering. Do you use this? Do you love this? Would you buy it again? If the answer is no, it had to go. And she ended up getting rid of quite a lot of stuff so that I could organize her laundry room and actually have space to do it right. So this whole section is kids. Yep. I mean, you have a lot of kids, so I get like a lot of kids stuff. Do you have a toy room in the house somewhere? In the basement? Yep. You do? Okay, awesome. So ideally, I would have no toys in the laundry room, okay. just craft supplies. So as we're going through here too, I have a feeling you're like, when you're tidying, you're picking things up, or things the kids have outgrown, it's probably gone in there to die. Like, I'm going to deal yep. with this later. Yep. So we're dealing with it today. Yay. So really fast, I want you to pick it up if the kids have not played with it, if they're not going to miss it, it's gone. Okay. When in doubt, throw it out. Perfect. Okay, so grab, and we're only keeping the stuff in this pile that's a key. Okay. Hats, we have hats. They can be donated, but I don't know who wants them. <laughs> but do you want them? I don't. No, then they're God, just throw it over there we can get rid of it. exhausted and we're done in one day you guys in one day in just a few hours we decluttered we took everything out we reorganized it put everything back and now it's time to bring in the homeowner <gasps> Kathy come see are you ready I am come in wow no way <laughs> You do have the counter and you have a spot for random papers when you come in. School, all the kids' school artwork. Awesome. It goes in there and 
I'm going to share this with you in a second, but this is like your dump zone. Mm -hmm. So instead of dumping here, okay. we actually cleaned out an entire cabinet for you. Oh, wow. So you can still put all your papers and your extras and things you have to deal with. Okay. But not take up your beautiful counter space. Awesome. And everything has a home. You got rid of so much. I did. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. And because of that, you have so much functional space. Are you ready for this? Yes. Oh my. Isn't this fabulous? And you had all of these great organizers. I mean, you had so many incredible organizers. We just took things out of packages yep. to really maximize the space. We found so much faster, but I love it. It's so organized now. Ooh, that looks much better than before. <laughs> so over here you have sort of your tool section. Okay. So it has your 3M strips and the like outdoor crafty stuff for the kids okay. and bubbles and all of that is sort of here. And then in this cabinet, it's all of your paper products. Ooh, ready for the party. <laughs> You're ready for the party. And it's so easy to access and everything's really organized for you. So you can just pull it out. You kind of were doing this definitely before, but because you purge, Too much. No. it has... Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Purging was really um, so important in this space. And yeah, we just... A little bit more organization. Thank you Thank so much. You. I hope you enjoy your gorgeous space. I will. I'm so envious. <laughs> this is my dream laundry room. So it was a great, we had a great time organizing Thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you. It turned out awesome. I'm so glad you like it. Matt and Amy were my most recent Ladybug clients. And again, super obvious what their organizing style was because you walk in their house and you will not find a thing out of place. It was so tidy, immaculately organized, or it looked like it from the outside, but their storage room, it was full. I'm gonna show you how we can clear this out really quickly with some concrete rules. So we're gonna declutter with some rules. And the first rule is, if it's a baby item, it's going, yep. unless it's sentimental. Okay. Okay. The other thing is, if you haven't used it and don't have a place to use it right now, if you haven't used it like in the last year, if you wouldn't buy it again, mm. can we agree that that's going to go? Yes. Yep. You guys are easy. Yeah. <laughs> I got you here. I need to. Yeah. <laughs> we need oh, to do it. All right. Check out this huge donate pile. So much stuff is leaving this home. Tell me you're shocked. <laughs> Are it you? It feels good. Yes. It's crazy. awesome. This is amazing how much stuff we got out of that basement. It's, it's, it's amazing, but it's kind of sad too to think that like this whole time we just had this and we never even really paid attention to it. The whole yeah. time it was just such a 
heavy thing on us and we just never yeah big weight and we never yeah we never really had the oomph to do, to do it. it together because this is this is overwhelming <laughs> just thinking about it and getting started was the hardest part once we were getting into it then it became so much easier just body doubling throw it, throw it, throw it body doubling get it out get it out get it out right and this was maybe five hours total yeah yeah not even a whole day yeah not even a whole day super impressive organizing for a ladybug really does just come down to lots of containers bins and baskets and i was so lucky because matt and amy's storage room already had all of the shelving in all of the containers i just had to rezone the space pack things a little bit different so that this space would stay organized finishing touches time we're just going to add some labels and then bring the family down and surprise them I'm making them close their eyes. <laughs> on the count of three. <laughs> One, two, three. Open your eyes and come on. Oh my oh, God. So this is your memory center and I wanted to make it really easy for you because kids come home with a lot of stuff. Yes. So they come home and they've got report cards or paper. This is how you do it. I kept the lids off. So you oh, you're, oh. Or <laughs> you're organizing. Yes. We kept Makes the lids nice on for, for photos to keep yes. the dust free. But this stuff, it's about easy access. I want you to be able to go through them and look at the memories, but also put things away really fast and really easy so you have baseball cards yes but now you can like pull them out and go through them yep. it's all yep. organized it's really awesome. and it's really easy to find it's so many just sweet memories <laughs> <laughs> and now you won't have yeah. that clutter upstairs you yeah. just come down and you just toss it away this was like the nagging to-do list right mm -hmm. the rest of your home is gorgeous and now your storage room matches the rest of your space yeah. Yeah, this is great. I'm so happy yeah, for you. So I also did another little makeover of Matt and Amy's bedroom. This space was great because it didn't cost a lot of money to make a really big change in their bedroom. They just needed some more ladybug friendly organization. They had lots of hangers and dresser drawers, but that doesn't really work for a ladybug because you have to be able to put things away really fast. So installing a new closet organizing system, having lots of bins and baskets, and simplifying and letting go was all they needed to make a really big change. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> oh, and I don't have to like shove your stuff every time I need to get my clothes. It's a haze and hers versa. That, 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 that is so cool. I love that. Oh my that. gosh. What that are... is awesome. The curtains. It makes it like the window look a lot larger. Yes, it does. It makes everything look really cool. Like back the room is yes. big. Like before you walk in, I was like, bed. This is really nice. I know this video was a little bit longer than normal, but I just really wanted to not only show you the different organizing styles, but show you real life examples and solutions and ideas that you can use in your own home. If you don't know your organizing style, you can take the free quiz at clutterbug Dot com. Fill out the questions. Make sure that you're answering not for fantasy you, but real life you. And you'll be able to identify whether you're a detailed person or you're more laid back. And if you need visual storage or you prefer things hidden. And once you know that, once you know your organizing style, you can set up a real system that stays tidy all the time.
Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Ring that little notification bell. It's important. Hit that like button and make sure you come back for more organizing tips and tricks each and every week. I'll see you then. Hey guys, thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. It's one week until Valentine's Day and I really need your help because I want to do something nice for Joe. We've been together 22 years. 20! Two freaking years, and we've never celebrated Valentine's Day, ever, in 22 years. We don't get each other gifts, we just never have. At first he used to like hand make me some Valentines. That ship has sailed. We don't do anything for each other, but I wanna do something special this year because mostly I feel guilty. I just went to Mexico on a girl's trip without him, left him home alone with the kids in the house and the dogs, even my parents' dogs. It's complete craziness. So let me know in the comments something I can do. Keep it PG, people. There might be children watching this video and in the comments. So something PG that I can do for my husband that isn't like a big thing, but it also feels like a grand gesture. I don't know. Can I clean his truck? That seems horrible. I don't want to do that. Let me know in the comments below something I can do. And also, if you celebrate Valentine's Day, I don't want chocolates and flowers. I don't want you to buy something for me on this day just because you're supposed to. And Joe and I have never done that. But I definitely want to make this year a little bit special. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you next time.